Good evening, gentlemen. Today I thought I would go through a interesting blog post by Brian James and go through this and add a little bit of color and of course celebrate one of our fellow brothers on a mission to make sexual energy and abstinence a core pillar of how you can add a competitive edge to your life. So let's begin. Get yourself a cup of tea, a glass of water, and we'll, uh, we'll approach this in a very meditative way. So I'm pleased you can be with me today. I haven't read this as of yet, but um, it got a lot of attention on some subreddits, and I thought I would bring it to uh, your eyes here. So thank you, Brian James. Why semen retention is the key to your success and competitive edge in life. So first and foremost, you all know the deal, hopefully by now, what is retention? I don't think this is something that you need to consciously bring your attention to. I've said this many times because I feel it is counterproductive to your success to bring your attention to the fact that you are making this the practice. I have mentioned more times than I can count. It should be part of your normalcy. You do not tell yourself that it is day 50 of not smoking or day 33 of not drinking or day 44 of not using meth. Do you do these things? Why don't you count the days? Because once you remove your attention from these days, you will find the outcome comes to you very, very easily. So please remove your attention. Brian has highlighted here that the 90 to 180 days is a good benchmarker for full recovery here. So why does SR help you operate at your highest level? Allow me to give some background on the true value of your sperm. Your sperm is your internal, sustainable energy source. It is your life force. Actually, it is your light force. If you put sperm underneath a microscope, you will see light around the heads of the sperm. That light is supreme consciousness. And you can see here, just on the thumbnail of this video, the light around the nucleus of the consciousness of the data of these cells. It takes a ton of energy just to create sexual energy. There is a lot of blood used to manufacture your sexual energy. And there are also a ton of white blood cells in your semen to accompany sperm on their journey. So when a man ejaculates, he is actually losing a serious amount of blood. The red blood used to create the sperm and the white blood used to accompany and protect it. When you lose blood, you lose energy. And when you lose blood on a daily basis due to over stimulating yourself, your energy levels will suffer. It is harder to get up and out of bed in the morning. It is harder to focus. Clarity seems impossible. It is easier to get angry or overstressed because your body is already overworking trying to replace the energy it has lost. And before it can create more, it has to build more red blood cells. I always like to conclude or describe this in the form of energy allocation. This is an asset like time, like money. You should treat it as he has given a great example here in terms of blood. Imagine for a moment that you are bleeding every single day, that you lost blood every single day. That's less blood that you have to take oxygen to your working muscles, to take oxygen to your brain. And as he's highlighted here, you need that blood in order to transmute it into your sexual fluids. We have to remember, we have to be sensitive, we have to respect that the body will prioritize two functions above all. That is survival and that is replication. That is through the food that you eat 
and that is through the sexual fluids that you have. If you are constantly taxing yourself in relation to your outcomes of survival and replication, you will of course incur negative side effects. One of the more tangible ones being less energy. Your energy levels will suffer because you're taxing your body more. When you stop taxing your body, you reallocate resources to cognitive function, to recover, and then you're able to perform optimally. This is what he describes in terms of a creative and competitive edge. Let's proceed. Women have their period every 30 days and they will naturally release blood from three to five days. If you as a man are losing blood, he's taking my analogy here, or perhaps we by serendipity are just thinking the same things through sexual release, her internal receptors will pick up on this and she will begin to unconsciously disrespect you or not feel completely safe with you or trusting of you due to her sensing you are not at your maximum level of strength. I wouldn't disagree, I just think it's not accurate of the reality of what's happening here. Women highly value men who are able to replicate with them, to reproduce with them. It does not make sense biologically or evolutionary to chase a man who is infertile because his chances of giving you offspring are zero. In this way, she is going to be acutely sensitive to your fertility through the pheromones that bleed out in your bodily fluids, in your sweat, in your blood, in your urine, and signal, signal, the level of fertility you have in relation to your ability to replicate. Then she will behave in a weird way that she isn't even aware of. So it's subconscious, it's not a conscious thing that she's doing. And you might react to her weird because either consciously or unconsciously, your reaction is what validates to her that something is indeed wrong. I did another post or uh, a video, pardon me, a couple of uh, days ago, maybe a week ago, on the pheromonal beta, meaning it is a signifier of your ability to be able to reproduce. It is biology, it is evolution. This isn't something that you have conscious control over. Do not get away from the fact, the real fact, that you are an animal, or at least you're living inside one. And like all animals, you can signal pheromones to mate, when you are in season, when you are fertile, and you will not signal fertility if you are not fertile, if you're not able, if you do not have the means to reproduce because you are empty of life. Because you are operating on low energy, low testosterone, and low blood, you will get overly emotional, causing your woman to argue with you out loud or in her mind and withdraw her love from you. This happens in a very subconscious way as well. And she will test you. It's another shit test that she might uh, use to her advantage. If you want your woman to be submissive, affectionate, cooperative, loving, and happy, then you cannot lose more blood than she loses naturally through her period. That's a very interesting uh, comparison. It's a very interesting comparison. Well, our brother recommends that you shouldn't ejaculate more than three to five times a month no less than 10 to six days in between each. I think that's a very happy medium for individuals who are already in a relationship and do not wish to practice something like Coretza. And I will just mention at this point here, many of you feel like I'm an idol, uh, ideologue in this respect. I, I believe you can have a relationship, a happy relationship and practice traditional intercourse and use protection. This is a tool, this is a tool like fasting is a tool, like exercise is a tool. The minute you become attached to it and you start fasting every single day is the minute you start to lose so much weight and you start to incur negative side effects. The minute you start exercising every day without relent, you overtrain. Do not be unintelligent with this. Ignorance is the only sin. Ignorance of not knowing that if you are overindulging, like if you are overindulging in exercise, you will incur negative side effects. If anything, you should pull the reins on these things. 
Does it mean that a chaste life? Does it mean that an that a, a life without any sexual pleasure is the only thing that you pursue? Absolutely not. That is a path reserved for very, very strict brahmacharis. It may not be for you as a modern man. I am just asking you to use this tool intelligently. If you want to use this tool, as many of you want to, to get a woman, I will concede that perhaps it's not the most, uh, what would you say, intelligent uh, way to do so because the lifestyle isn't consistent and you have to change it, but it is a it is a means to acquiring that kind of life. I'm, I'm not naive to why people do this. Of course, they hear these stories about women attraction and they want to do this because they've been lonely for a while. You just need to incorporate some kind of happy medium in your relationship where you're giving respect to your sexual energy and you're not digressing into sexual addiction with your partner and using her as a very elaborate sex toy for your gratification. This is a good happy medium here. Practicing with Kareza, practicing with some kind of Tantra, I think is a very fantastic and healthy balance to incorporate this into a, what would you say, Western, a modern Western lifestyle. If you want to be more irresistible to women or your wife, then hold your seed for a minimum of 21 days. You will naturally emit an energy that women will unconsciously pick up on, alerting them to the fact that you have a high chance of fertilize them because you have a full tank. How crude, but how true otherwise. Your energy speaks first, and then it speaks volumes. Many men are sabotaging their chances of meeting women and being sought after by women and successfully picking up women because they are trying to get women with very little value to offer. This is how you demonstrate your value. You demonstrate it by being fertile. You demonstrate it subconsciously. You demonstrate it biologically. You demonstrate it evolutionary. Your value as a man begins with the potential life you are able to give. If you have empty balls, don't expect any calls. Fantastic. Uh, your sexual fluids also contain fluid from your brain, your spinal column, and many of your other organs. Your entire body is involved in the process of making the fluid that gives life. Sperm contains genetic information as well as information stored in your spine that is based on your previous life experiences. The way I like to convey this is your body, your nervous system, your ancestors are holding you, loving you. You are an egg. You are an egg of genetic information and the microcosm of the macrocosm that is your body is of course your sexual fluid, your sexual information. Do not cast your pearls before swine. In other words, your sperm contains your personality, idiosyncrasies, thinking patterns, and any life traumas that you have experienced. When a woman is exposed to even a drop of your sexual fluids, it is absorbed through the walls of her vagina, enters her blood, and ultimately gets stored in her brain. She will inherit your personality traits, behaviors, and begin thinking like you. The scientific term that describes this best is called microchimerism. I think this is an opportunity here for a very interesting video on microchimerism. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Because this is gonna be a long video, gentlemen, I'm not gonna go into it here. I'm gonna dedicate maybe something specifically on that and give you some more unique uh, information after I've done a little bit of research here because this is my first time coming across the uh, the term. Let's press on. This is another reason women blame men for everything whether they are aware of it or not. Women are designed to be a reflection of their man becoming a uh, living spiritual part of him forever. Different cultures and even some very wealthy families are strict about their bloodlines for this very reason. Single mothers are also a handful for this reason. The new man must understand exactly what he is doing and how to lead because not only is he dealing with the single mother and children, but he is also dealing with the baby daddy on a spiritual level who will heavily influence her behaviors, 
a long time after their separation. Another great reason why you should not be getting into any kind of altercations with women who already have uh, children and who isn't supported by the child's father. And here we have the uh, son, I believe this is, a very analogous to the life of the universe and the life of our loins, let's say. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. When a sperm makes contact with an egg, initiating fertilization, there is a flash of light that emits from the egg. So imagine this is the flash of light emitting from the egg. Scientists are now calling this a zinc spark. But the ancient civilizations have known about this for thousands of years. Because your blood, fluids, and sex cells contain metals like iron, magnesium, and zinc, they create a spark of light as they clash together microscopically. The sperm cell is not the only cell in the animal kingdom that can navigate independently. On a microscopic level, you are superior to the egg of a woman that must be guided from the ovaries into the fallopian tube and into the womb. So there is an intelligence behind our sexual fluids. Your sperm is connected to the stars. And again, uh, there's this idea of the microcosm and the macrocosm, uh, the micro and the macrocosm, excuse me, whereby everything that you can see in the universe is predicated on the uh, microscopic environment or planets of our bodies. So how do we begin to apply this knowledge? Depending on how much potential energy you want to unlock, you can hold your seed for 21, 100 or 180 days. If you opt for 100 days, think of you making 1% progression each day. Every 10 days, you regain another 10% of yourself, your dignity, soul and divine masculine you will become clearer, sharper, more decisive. And if you are in sales, you will sell more and make 800 times more money. SR will help bring your innermost desires into reality fast. Understand the value of your seed and become passionate about protecting your seed with your life. It is the most precious part of you. Do not give it up so easily. You can still have sex without ejaculating, which is called Karetsa or Tantra, or White Tantra. If you meet a new woman, wait until the fourth time to have sex and ejaculate. You can get extreme pleasure from just focusing on pleasing your woman. I would also advocate you look into resources like Mindgasm, which allows you to have orgasm separate from ejaculation, which is a real skill you can achieve. And many people roll their eyes or tell me, Joseph, you are talking shit. But no, there are two processes. There are different processes. Orgasm is one process. Ejaculation is another. They are not synonymous, should you not wish them to be. I disagree, however, with becoming passionate about this. I believe the more attention and energy, as I prefaced, you give to this practice, the more you push it away from yourself. Do not approach this in a way where it is larger than life. Approach it from a perspective that this is in your normal life. When you reduce the pedestal that you place this practice on, you will find you are easily able to incorporate it into your lifestyle. Think about something that you normally do that you don't need to give very much effort to because it is considered a part of your identity. You do not think about, again, not snorting cocaine because again it is not consistent with your identity it doesn't require energy this shouldn't require energy 200 million to 500 million swimmers women have to earn that kind of special attention from me i couldn't have put it better than myself brother this is part of your reframing you are the prize you hold the keys to the kin kingdom you are the guardian of life. Do not allow a woman easy access to your life, to your DNA. That is another way to think about it. When you are having intercourse with a woman, you are sharing your DNA. Are you happy sharing her DNA with you? I can't say that a lot of men would be so quickly 
uh, so quick, pardon me, to jump in the sheets if they recognize the genetic impressions that she could give to your future offspring. So gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this particular video here. And again, we'll give our appreciation for a very fantastic and uh, insightful post from Brian James posted three years ago, giving you some uh, traffic coming your way, Brian. And uh, like I always say, these are just theories. Take what is valuable, discard which is not, and we'll speak to you together very, very soon. Take care.